Hi, this is Tom with Compix Media, and today I'll be going over Timeline Part 2, which entitles functionalities such as Repeat, Object Effect, Graphic Mode, Track Alignment, Pause, Applying an Effect, Hide Object, Lock and Unlock. And without any further ado, I'll begin. If I go to my timeline, you can see that there are locks on some of my items, and no locks on others. You can easily change this by clicking in the rectangle box next to the item's name. You can also make the item disappear by clicking the green circle, and you can make it reappear by clicking the circle area one more time. Moving on, if you want to apply any of your own animations to your page, remember you can convert your page to animation mode. You can get here by going to your page tab at the bottom. You can also change your page mode by right clicking in the creation window. To demonstrate how object align helped me, I started off by creating one rectangle and adjusting it into 3D mode. I have adjusted the position of my pivot point to the edge of my rectangle, so the rectangle will rotate like a page in a book. You can learn more about pivots in part one of my timeline tutorials. I then animated the rectangle to rotate 180 degrees over 60 frames. I copied the rectangle and pasted it five more times, and I adjusted the color for each of them so that you can tell them apart. I then went to my alignment area and chose track intervals to separate the rectangles. You can choose how far apart you'd like your rectangles separated. I chose 10 frames. Now when I play back this page, my rectangles will unfold just like a book and will be separated each by 10 frames. Now when I play this page back, my rectangles will unfold just like a book and each rectangle will be separated by 10 frames. Copy and paste and object align can save you so much time in creating pages for your production. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about how pause works. You can right click on your timeline and add a pause very easily. Once you create a pause you can move it and adjust it very easily on your timeline. You can also clear it by right clicking again. Another key feature to the timeline is graph mode. Graph mode is another way that you can control your movements and animations inside of your timeline. I've created various objects which have their x, y, and z axes changing over the course of the timeline. Your x-axis will be represented by a red line, while your y-axis will be represented by a green line, and your z-axis will be represented by a blue line. Depending on the user, graph mode might be easier. You'll notice as I animate for my blue object, the z-axis on the timeline curves and the transform tab's z position will also adjust. The same will go for all of my objects animating in either an x, y, or z positions. Now I'd like to discuss how you can layer objects inside of your timeline. 2D objects are layered through the layering buttons at the top of your toolbar or can be rearranged in your timeline from top to bottom. The top item will appear in front of all items while the bottom item will appear in the back of the page. 3D objects are layered with each other by using the z-axis, but if a 2D and a 3D object are together, whichever object is on top in the timeline will appear in the front. As you can see, my green shape with a large z-axis will appear in front of my blue shape with zero z-axis, even though the blue shape is above the green shape in my timeline. But you will notice that the teal polygon will appear in front of all objects because that is the top layer in my timeline. Moving on, I'd like to explain the repeat option in your transform tab. I've made a box which will start on the left and move to the right over 60 frames. I believe I'm going to have it repeat from 15 frames to 30 frames. What I've done is set my keyframe pointer at 30 frames. Then I made sure to select the amount of times to repeat, which is called the count. 
Then I pressed Add. I'd like to explain the Repeat option in your Transform tab. I've made a box which will start on the left and move to the right over 60 frames. Right now I'm adjusting the amount of time it will repeat. The white lines represent the portion of the timeline it will repeat at 30 frames. I initially set my keyframe pointer to 30 frames, pressed Add, then adjusted the section I wanted to repeat. Count refers to the amount of times you'd like this section to repeat. The timeline will change depending on the repeat's length. Last but not least, I'd like to show you how you can apply an effect to your timeline. You'll first go to your Effect tab at the bottom. Make sure whatever item you want that effect to be applied to is selected. Then you'll select the type of effect that you want to apply. Make sure to choose in or out depending on where you want it to go, or both. You can adjust the duration by clicking and dragging in the timeline or by adjusting the duration on the tab below. If you're in still mode, make sure you select still in your timeline as the item will then affect the entire page. If you have questions, please feel free to email us at support at compix.tv or visit our website compix.tv. If you have sales inquiries, please call 949-585-0055. Thank you.